Welcome back to my third place network. This is Evo with my amazing co-host, Brandy. And we are back with another awesome adventurous episode of From Under the Apron. And this is another rewatch and breakdown of season one of Cobra Kai titled Cobra Kai Never Dies. Brandy, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? Doing on wonderful so far. That's awesome. Um, are we ready to do the Cobra Kai thing? The thing? Absolutely. I'm ready. I'm ready to do it if you are. I'm ready to do the thing. But before we get to the breakdown, we finally have mail. Um, let's go. I don't have a, a thing, an audio for the mail, but here's the mail. <laughs> um, it goes, hi, E. I just listened to your episode with special guest and friend, Brandy. You guys did a great job. Your hosting podcasting skills are top notch. You're a pro. And the chemistry between you two is fantastic. Can't wait for the next episode. Love, Dawn. Brandy, isn't that your best friend? <laughs> she is one of my besties, yes. She's one of your besties. Oh, besties. <laughs> And fun fact, she's never seen she's never seen Cobra Kai, and it has been about twenty years since she's seen Karate Kid, so she had to watch them this weekend. Oh, that's awesome! We're we're like trying to get people to yeah, we're mm-hmm. trying to get people to watch Cobra Kai and Karate Kid at the same time, and so here we go. Um, I love the fact that all it took was to get you on the show for people to actually start writing me. <laughs> I'm You're kidding, welcome. Don. I'm kidding, Don. <laughs> you can write me anytime. I appreciate it. Anybody from under the apron at gmail.com. Appreciate it. Um, also, I think this is a great time to tell everybody that the last episode we did was Brandy's first time on the podcast, right? Mm, yes, it was. You did freaking amazing. You did awesome. It was like, I, everybody kept saying that, like, you know, it sounded like you've been on here before. Like, no, this is your first time on a podcast. Yep, I mean, first time. I mean, we get we get the practice from being on TikTok Live. Like we we're host, we're host there. You're your co host there also when you have people in your box. So it's more sort of like that. But here is just like, hey, we're doing a radio show. I never uh, thought of it that way. Right, right. I was like, I, I never thought of it that way either. Like until I got on the on camera, I was like, "Oh, so this is like a podcast. You're just looking at my face." Where on the opposite end is you going into an audio one instead of just like everybody staring at you. Whereas two, I used to be all like, "No, don't look at me," <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah. Because I was now you're completely stupid. opposite of that. Now I'm the complete opposite of that. That is correct. I also want to say thanks to you. It's been a week since we dropped the last episode. It has 20 downloads. That is completely new to me. Uh, this never oh. happened before. In within the next few days that I posted the episode, like three days at least, it went up to 15 downloads. And then it slowly got up to 20. So thanks to you. Thank you for coming out to the show. Um, thank you to anybody that is following the show now on Spotify or any <laughs> other audio stuff that we have. And I'm going to say thank you again, Brandy. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. It's fun. It is fun. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we're going to do... Episode four and five, correct? We're going to break it down, then we're going to tell you how we thought of it. Um, I'll give you the trivia and the fun facts towards the middle of the episode and let you know. So episode four, titled Cobra Kai Never Died, written by Jason Bellevue, who was also a producer on Ground Floor. Uh, If you remember that episode, that, that show. With Skylar Austin? Yes. I did, yes. Yeah, I remember that too. I was just like yeah. trying to figure out who else was in it. And I was like, ugh, 
I know it was just Skylar Austin and some other people too, but I just can't remember who who they were. Um, it's like basically people from they're just like people from the OC, I think, when they were coming out when the OC like was gone. Um, oh. he Jason Belvey also produced a bunch of other shows, but I figured Ground Floor is the only one I remember. Uh, directed by Jen Salota, it's a who is a producer and writer known for The Office, Abbott Elementary, and and the director controls the universe. Damn, that was in two thousand two. That's a long we time ago. A, it is. It, it was a long time ago. Fucking Andy Richter controls the. I remember it. I remember. I know who Andy Richter is, and I remember he had a show. It was like so long ago. It was like almost twenty years. More than twenty years. Wow. It could be uh, 22 years if it's 2002. Oh, yeah, that's right. So we're in 2024. Yes. <laughs> so that's <laughs> is when Daniel's car dealership billboard is sprayed with lewd graffiti. It consumes Daniel and escalates tensions against a rival. Robbie, Johnny's delinquent son, is embarrassed about his father and his new dojo. The bullying escalates against Miguel and motivates Johnny in a surprising way. Um... Cold Open is on Robbie Keane, played by Ta- Ta- I forgot his name. Tanner Buchanan. Tanner, at, yep. Working at an electronics repair shop where a customer approaches him with a laptop. Robbie obtains a man's, the man's password and takes the laptop out back where he meets with his delinquent friends, having traded places with one of them who actually works at the store and proceeds to sell the laptop to the highest bidder online. As they leave, Robbie picks up a discarded Cobra, Cobra Kai flyer and reacts to the Zane as Bobby's image. The Cobra Kai logo appears on the screen. Um, T- Tanner Buchanan, where has he been? Like, I want to call him Tyler. I don't know why. Not Tyler, Tanner. I was like, I know, but his name just seems like he's a Tyler. He looks like a Tyler, mm. basically. Mm, I don't like that name, so no. Tanner. No, no likey Tanner. Uh, no, I don't like Tyler. Tanner's oh, fine. Like, oh, okay, um, you don't like Tyler. I don't know. For some reason, it looks like a Tyler. I just keep saying Tyler. Uh, okay, Tanner Buchanan, who's also been on Girl Meets World. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Fuller House. Fuller House? I've never seen him on Fuller House. Yep, he was I on gotta, Fuller House. I gotta go watch that episode. And he's also been in one movie ever since he's been on Cobra Kai. Um, he's All That. A remake of She's All That. Which, yeah, I, I'm going to say it was pretty cool. I, I I watched it because of him. Not because of who else was in this movie. That is like a big thing on TikTok. You remember who that is? Uh, no, because I watched it only because of him. <laughs> right. And the person we're talking about is Addison Ray. Oh, yes. Addison Ray. Yes, I'm like I didn't watch it because of her, but okay. But Tanner Chandler and it. Rachel Lee Cook is in it, who came from She's All That, and also straight from Girl Meets World. Peyton Meyer is in it as well. Mm-hmm. And the best part about that movie is Matthew Lillard dancing at the end of the movie. Um, <laughs> I think I spoiled it, but yeah, y'all should check it out. Pretty fun movie. Pretty fun time. Um, next scene is at night. Johnny walks the streets in a drunken haze, showing flashbacks of him returning a badly beaten Miguel home after the Halloween dance. Uh, his distraught mother demands that he stay away from her son. He apologizes and says that he shouldn't have never gotten involved. Miguel's in the background on the couch yelling that Cobra Kai never dies! Oh, dying. <laughs> Back at the side of a LaRusso billboard, Johnny encounters a man spraying painting graffiti on a wall and offers traded beer for the man spray can. I love that Miguel's last words are Cobra Kai never dies as he dies on yep. the couch. Right? I like that part too. <laughs> yes, it's so serious. Um. It's not Johnny's fault, is it? No, it's not. It's not. It's not Johnny's fault. Eh. That's definitely not Johnny's fault. And 
I feel so bad because it just, it, yeah, it's just really sad. It's really sad because the one person that like, you know, likes him, he can't even be around now. So it makes it sad. Right. Um, poor Johnny gets uh, like, it's not even his fault. And he's just like, Oh man, I fucked up. I ruined somebody's life. And I'm gonna go drink my sorrows away. And Ooh, it's quite pink. <laughs> he looks at the LaRusso billboard. What are you laughing at? Huh? It's all your fault. If I had not seen your face, I would have brought back Cobra Kai. And so he goes up to the, grabs the graffiti and does we don't know who does it. We don't know what he does with it until like we see it. The next day, Daniel seen preparing breakfast for his kids when he attempts to speak to Samantha about last night. He made some banana rama pancakes and asked his other son Anthony, played by Griffin Santo Pietro, to leave some for his sister. Anthony makes a pancake taco with whipped cream and syrup drizzling down his hand, making a mess. That's disgusting, dude. Even Daniel's all like, bro, come on. What are you doing? <laughs> like, I, you know? <laughs> like, what? Why? Why are you? What are you? I'm telling you, Anthony wasn't planned. <laughs> like, what are you doing? That's just mean. <laughs> I know, but still, it, was just, it feels like he wasn't planned at all. Like, Amanda. Why? What because he doesn't make them special pancakes? Why are you playing favorites? <laughs> Sam. It's like Sam's all like, whatever, dad. Sam finally arrives, but she scurries away, obviously still angry with her dad. And he's all like, can I have her pancakes? I'm like, dude, no. <laughs> Stop. Oh, man, it's so bad. As he drives to work, his wife calls him and asks if she's close by the dealership. And he says he's on his way, but makes it a point to stare at his rival the billboard and point out that it's big and he must be compensating for something. His wife tells him it's not why she called, and then you hear that he is livid to see that someone has defaced his billboard by painting a giant penis in his mouth. He discusses the matter with his wife, who tries to downplay it's important, but he ultimately agrees to paint over it. She then tells him that nobody's going to notice it, but they hear Daniel's cousin, Louie, played by Brett Ernst, say how hilarious it is. You see that thing outside, brother? Cousin? Come on, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> how do you get the the most obnoxious jersey guy to come out from that jersey to california he is, he is very jersey <laughs> he's very jersey i just remember that they lived in jersey and that is not yep. uh, like yeah i'll send them out there no problem why <laughs> why would you do that mom <laughs> Um, was the saying on his face? Okay. The next scene, we see Miguel's mom hand him more ice packs for his ribs and tells him she will drive to school from now on. Miguel says that she will only make things worse if he only had a few more lessons with Sensei Lawrence. He would be ready, but she disagrees and doesn't want him doing karate. Um, I love how you say that. That because it's his mom. I don't want you doing any of that shit karate. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no more karate. You, you do that so well. Because <laughs> my mom was the same way. It's like, no, no karate, no. I'm like, ma, I'm trying to defend myself. No, I don't I don't want that man. He sells drugs. Mom, <laughs> he does not sell drugs. Like, my mom, everybody that I, freaking, every guy that I would bring to the house and hang out with them, does he sell drugs? I don't know, mom. <laughs> We we don't we're ha we haven't spoken that way yet. Like, hey, bro, do you sell drugs? He does karate. No karate. That karate is drugs. Oh my god. <laughs> but mom was awesome. Like my grandma was like the one that I had to get worried about. Y'all heard that stories. <laughs> <And> <laughs> my grandma would be like karate. I teach you fucking rock and throw it at the fucking person. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta listen to those episodes of my grandma stories because they are wild. My mom would be like, "Do they do drugs?" My grandma would be like, 
throw a rock at the person. Doesn't matter if you do drugs or not. She sounds like a uh, badass. Like she was uh, a bad, badass, for sure. I was told she was. My mom was scared of her. Oh. <laughs> it's like she was. <laughs> um, Miguel's grandma appears and asks Carmen in Spanish what the problem is. The boy finally found himself something he likes. And then Carmen tells her mom to look what they did to him. Poor kid, he's broken now. And grandma says, all he needs is practice and puts his hands up. Come on, mm -hmm. mijo, let's go. Come on, come on. You know, let's go, let's go. Put those hands up, senor. Oh, now he's not master reading. Now you understand what he was doing, right? <laughs> grandma. <laughs> I love the grandma. I'm sorry, but I like her. Grandma's awesome. She is. Uh, she's awesome. Carmen says she doesn't want Miguel near that loser. Miguel defends Sensei Lawrence, saying that she don't know him and that he is a great man. <sighs> What did, what did, well, before you go further, what did you think of that? Did you did you agree that he is a great man, or what did you think? He is redeeming himself. He's a, he's he's coming along. He's like okay, slowly. Hey, you're doing very something slowly. Like, okay, like you're not in depression mode anymore. You begin abandoning your kid. Okay, you're redeeming yourself. I get it. You're trying to find something to look forward to. Same. Um, but then, like, the kid gets hurt and he blames himself. Like, no, dude, bully. That's all you gotta just give him some more practice. That's all. He'll he'll learn. <laughs> but she she says like he's a loser. Like, like she's like she's seen him before or something. And Miguel's all like, no, he's not a loser. He can't, no. And he's all holding his ribs like, oh, shit. He's not a loser, Mom. He's a great man. And then we do an optical flip to Johnny on the floor of his apartment with beer on the rock on the phone. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Meanwhile, Johnny is doing loser things. Uh, he... Picks up the phone, the school reminding him they spoke a couple months ago. So from episode one to now, to episode four, it's been a couple months. I was just going to say that. I never realized that the first time I actually watched it, but this time watching it, I'm like, okay, so that's the time span. So the time span is that maybe they talked in August. August, September, and we're now in October, and they're doing the whole Halloween dance. So, well, there are Christmas decorations up. There are Christmas decorations up right in now. this episode. Uh, yeah, yes. episode. it was. It, I think it was episode four or five. It was in one of them. Pretty sure it was. It might have been five, but there's Christmas decorations up. So episode four. Episode so four would, is that, Halloween day. That would make sense. Yeah, Halloween time, couple months ish. Yeah. We skip yeah. over Thanksgiving and we do a uh, Christmas winter. thing already. Winter, yep. okay. Um, I think what they probably you did go to school in August at the end of August, like that's usually how they go. Um, a couple months ago, damn, it's been a couple months since they talked on the phone. Uh, Johnny gets up from the floor and the vice principal at Robbie's school apologizes to him. him for interrupting the big canoe trip and reminding him that his note said they would be gone for two weeks, but they've been gone for almost a month. Um, Johnny is confused and asks if Robbie has been out of school for a month now, and if he's not back soon, they will have to discuss holding him back. Johnny says he will be there and hangs up the phone. So, Robbie is applies for school, shows up at school, hangs out for a bit. Okay. A month passes by. I'm on this big kind of trip. Okay, cool. Dude hasn't been even there. Been there for like a month. It's like the school's just started and he's already sending. He's like, all right, we're going to hold him back. That's not how it works, people. Give it like second quarter. I don't know what that even means. 
<laughs> just know that. It's like, <laughs> give him until like after around January, then you can have talks about holding him back. But right now, it's just like, why are you talking about holding him back so quickly? Like he just missed a month of school. Give the kid a break. That's a, that's a long time though. A month missing a month of school. That's a, that's a lot to get kept caught yeah, get caught up on to catch up on. That's that's a month worth of work. Month worth of work. Yeah, that's true. But still, what grade is he in though? Uh, do we know what grade they're in? Um. I mean, if I had a guess, I'd say sophomore. But yeah, around there, sophomore, because they're we're we're coming to season six, and they're still in school. Okay, so it could even be freshman. Right. So freshman, freshman yeah. Sophomore, maybe maybe freshman or sophomore, yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm going to have to watch the entire show. Every episode. Because we know what happens when they go back to school. Anyway, he walks out of his apartment and Miguel is waiting for him outside trying to see if they can go back to the dojo. But Johnny tells him there is no dojo. And he's closing it up. See, without you, kid, I can't do anything. I need it's you, so man. Sad. It's so Miguel, sad. Yeah, it is. Miguel asks what about him and that he needs him. But Johnny brushes him off and tells him he has to go. Oh, Miguel needs somebody. Miguel thinks that Johnny as his as a father figure, basically. And Johnny's all like, nah, dude. Don't worry about it. We're good. Stay over there. Don't worry about it. I'm I'm doing my set. I gotta go do my stuff. I gotta go find my kid. My real kid, not you. It's like, all right. I gotta go. I gotta go do stuff. See these freaking parents and their kids? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sam has daddy issues. Oh, don't even go there. And Robbie has daddy issues. Okay, well, I was going to bring up uh, how petty they are. Oh, that's the next episode, but okay, we'll go with daddy yeah. issues for this episode. So we're going with daddy issues? Okay. Dad issues, yeah. Mm-hmm. Dad wasn't their issues. Right. Um, at school, Sam, played by Mary Mauser, walks down the halls of the school and watches as everyone's poking fun at Aisha, played by Nicole Brown, and the video from the dance that went viral, which now the students are calling her Cheeto Pig. I suddenly don't like Cheetos anymore. Um, <laughs> no, I, I still do. <laughs> Sam tells Aisha people have short memories and everyone will forget, but Aisha says that he's, she's not going to forget and slams her lock. Oof. I'll never forget this. Kyler sneaks I mean, up behind Sam. pretty unforgettable. Right? Yeah. And that'd be, that'd be a hard thing to just forget. Like, I'll never forget this. Eerie words, too. Like, oh. Right. Um, taking you out. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Kyler sneaks up behind Sam and tells her to go to the movie. He got the movie tickets for later. She says she will talk to him later, but as they hug, the camera zooms in on her phone, and it's her dad leaving her messages. Like, Sam, where are you? Sam, 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 dance for me. Sam, okay. First time Daniel has ever had to deal with not being talked to. He actually uh, apologized to her and she ignored him because he said he was sorry. Can we talk? Sorry, I embarrassed you at the uh, dance. He, he, <laughs> well, no, but his text, his text was, I'm sorry. Can we talk? I'm sorry. Can we talk? At least he yeah. apologized. Yeah, he tried with banana rama pancakes. Well, I mean, uh, also the banana rama pancakes. All can pancakes. be forgiven uh, with pancakes, right? Right. Banana Rama to Pancakes is a homage to Banana Rama, which did a song on Karate Kid, Cruel Summer. Oh, oh I didn't even think about that. Huh. So we get to Daniel at the dealership where he is staring at his phone waiting for Sam to text him back. His secretary asked him if he would order lunch for everybody, specifically 100 sausages. Oh boy. They find out it was the rival dealership, Tom Cole on Van Nuys, who ordered a hundred long and thick sausages. Amanda says they got free lunch. Daniel calls up a new played by Dana Dude, who are trying to paint over the billboard, but Louis didn't start from the middle. 
Instead, he started on both ends. Oh, Louie, you're doing the jersey. You're doing it the jersey way. You gotta start on. You gotta start on on both ends, man, to keep the line going. You know? That's how we do it in Jersey. Don't you know? Doing it the jersey way. Um, Daniel gets mad and wants that image gone before the end of the day. They hang up the phone and Louis says he will do things his way and realizes he stepped on dog poop. Louis asks, how would a dog get up there? A new sh- realizes he just stepped on human poop. And Louis is still continuing to like, we're confused. Like, how would a dog get up here? I don't understand. <laughs> Not thinking this human poop is like, no, it's still dog. What? Who brought a dog up here? Man, that's crazy. That's a big dog for that big poop. Oh my god. <laughs> like, damn, Louie. Louie, come on, Louie. Oh my god. Um, Every time Louie talks, I'm just gonna like blame it on Jersey. Sorry, Jersey. <laughs> uh, Johnny travels to his ex-wife Shannon's house to convince Robbie to go back to school. But Robbie adamantly refuses. He says he tried knocking, but the boombox is too loud. What is a mask with a boombox? And then Johnny asks, what is that thing on his face? His mustache. What's a boombox? Okay, Gen Z, for those that don't know what a boombox is. I was going to say, you know what a boombox is, right? Of course I do. Okay, I had one. (laughs) Say say anything. I'll put it up and like, you don't say anything. I had a I had a purple one too. In it was so your cool. Eyes. In your eyes. Was that the song that was playing in Say Anything with the boombox? In your yeah. Yeah, with uh yeah, him holding it up. Yeah, him holding it up. And that's mm-hmm. the whole reason for the boombox. Like everybody's all like, What's a boombox? Um, it's when people would take it to the beach and like if you carry it around, on their shoulders. Carry it on their shoulders. Wow. <laughs> Playing basically the equivalent of now listening to your music out loud in the car while driving. That was them back in the day, just walking around the beach with a freaking big ass radio boombox and loud ass music. Mostly, mostly break dance music. <laughs> and and like they would oh. just have it there, and then like you see a couple people break dancing on cardboard boxes. Yeah, and those were the days. That was the whole reason for the boombox. Did you walk around with a boombox on your shoulders too? I saw someone do it, and I was just like, "Cool! <laughs> Why are you naked, sir?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, in this heat, okay. <laughs> Like yeah, I, um, I've never seen anyone walking around naked with a boombox. So. It was, like you would definitely see the same type of person holding it up, red shorts, no shirt, <laughs> and, and um, <laughs> what are what are they called? The the skate, right? The skate. They, yeah, they would have skate. They would have skate. They would wear skates. They would skate around the entire park. Oh. Oh yes, and don't forget that. with their and their shades on. Yeah, shades and yep. whole boy hat. <laughs> yep, yep. Always that one person with red shorts, though. Like you would yeah. see in a movie, or red pants, and like, oh shit, ozone and um, um, boogie whatever. Anyway, I'm talking about a different movie here. Uh <laughs> Johnny tells Robbie. Off track. Yeah, getting off track. Uh, Johnny tells Robbie he got a call from his school and their trip to Colorado. Robbie says he doesn't know what a real father-son trip looks like, so he had to use him, his imagination. Johnny asks where his mom and then says it has to be half the hours somewhere, 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Robbie gets up and tells Johnny not to talk about his mom. Don't talk about my mom. How dare you? Johnny tells him he has his whole future ahead of him. Robbie says that he can grow up and have his own strip mall karate school, right? Johnny tells him that his the school called him. Robbie says he's not going back to school and his mom is okay with it. And so he is he, so Johnny can go. 
Johnny leaves and Robbie slams the door behind him. Don't ever come back, Dad. Um, yeah. He, Johnny trying to do the whole dad thing. But he doesn't, like, dude. Just calm down. Win his trust first and then take him back to school. He'd be like, nah, I'm good. Um, I don't think that he's the type of person that has that that sense. Like he he he's he acts before he thinks. That's what Johnny does. That's what Johnny does. That's what he did. That's what he did back yes. in the uh, karate kid. Yep. He yep. acts before he thinks. Oh. Mm-hmm. Let me talk to Allie. <laughs> like we're exes now. No, we're not. Says who? Oh yeah, I forgot. Like, hey, kids sit playing soccer. Can you go away, please? Thank you. <laughs> oh, didn't he destroy his boombox? Yes, he did. Yeah, there it is. We bring back the boombox. That's the boombox. That, yes. No, it wasn't his. It was hers. It, it was, was Allie's boombox. It was Allie's boombox. Johnny's all having like flashbacks of, his, of the boombox again. Like, uh-huh. always comes back to Allie. Like, ah, yeah. That's, that's, yep. I'm surprised they didn't cut back to that scene. <laughs> At school, Miguel <laughs> is talking to his friends, Dimitri, played by Gianni DeZenzo, and Eli, played by Jacob Bertrand. After finding out that Miguel is no longer doing karate, karate, Dimitri looks at the bright side of it, this and tells Miguel it was only boosting his confidence and what that has done for them, but a black eye and the backpack thrown in the trash. Um, Eli thought it was cool that Miguel stood up to Kyler. The only fucking time Eli talked, was like that was cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Dimitri shoots it down, saying that being invincible is the best superpower anyone will ever have. Aww. Kyler, oh god, yeah. <laughs> like, no, I mean, close second is super speed, so you can just super run speed. away. Uh, Kyler and Brooks overhear this and they start to bully them, making fun of Eli's figurement by calling him a freak. Miguel and Eli run off, but they grab Dimitri's school bag and throw it in the trash, which Dimitri just threw a yogurt in there. Like, uh, yeah, that was gross. Dimitri gets it out and leaves as Kyler and Brooks hang back. The camera pans over to Sam, who was behind some books and over the Kyler situation. Um, I love she's just okay. standing back there, like letting them, letting her boyfriend bully these kids. And she knows karate, but she doesn't want to fuck. She's she's not ready to bring it back yet. But can, wait, can I just talk about that yogurt? Because is it just me or like how did the yogurt, a thing of yogurt, get all over his backpack when he pulls it out? Like it is covered in yogurt. How does a little yogurt in a thing do that? That's what I want to know. So here's what I was thinking. So he grabs the yogurt. He's tasted it like, okay, this is disgusting. I don't want it. So I'm going to go throw it in the trash. But when he throws it in the trash, he spirals it and throws it like it's liquid. And like every part of the bag, the trash bag, has yogurt on it. And okay. then he throws it in the middle in there. And that's it. Boom. So mm-hmm. when the backpack goes in, all around the backpack has yogurt on it. <laughs> like, what? Okay. I, like, I'm glad you. I'm glad that you explained that to me. Thank you. Because I saw the same thing, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> How did the entire bag around the bag, even the bottom of the, a little bit of the bottom All of the bag, it. but around the entire bag, has around. yogurt? Yep. Unless I'm there are a bunch around. of, unless he like ate a bunch of yogurts and threw it in there, and then more people threw more yogurt in there. But no, it's just like this dude must have like. Okay, I'm gonna throw it like a spiral thing. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> like what, dude? Oh, that was the only thought. Figure. Uh, that that makes perfect sense. Thank it you. Makes perfect sense. The yeah. only time I thought it was like, how did that happen? I'm glad we came up with the same um <laughs> like idea of it. Like, how did this yogurt just get around the entire backpack? And I just came up with that theory. Like, it, he must have just because he said he threw yogurt in there. Yeah, he yogurt. said, I just threw my yogurt in there. So, yeah. That's like, he unless said. he just threw it in the, like, you know, cup up where it just splashes oh, like, all over. Okay, or, but didn't splash all over 
but it splashed all over inside, neatly inside that garbage can, but nowhere else. Neatly, exactly. Yeah. Neatly inside. <laughs> Make it a mess. Make a mess, but neatly. That's a neat mess of yogurt right there. That's funny that we both thought of that or had that same reaction. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, later, Daniel and his wife Amanda meet with some marketing executives who show them the latest television ad from Tom Cole, played by David Shatra, a rival auto dealer whose ad is a blatant mockery of Daniel's own. Um, like, oh, cool. It's like his own rival. Yeah, there's no notes on this one for me. I was just like, oh, okay. That's great. You know, um, auto dealer war room stuff, basically. It's like, you say some stupid stuff, I'll do the same thing. Like, oh, you, you made a, you made a, um, an ad about, uh, the trees and, uh, bonsai trees and stuff. I'll make an ad and I'll be petty and I'll just do this. How un-American of you. You know, that's perfectly nice anyway. <laughs> so, might as well. Just say it. But it's all about the boba, the boba tea. Don't forget I that. I saw that. It's so annoying. <laughs> like, that is so annoying. Boba tea. What is the boba this? tea. Because <laughs> you know what happened? Like, okay, I was just gonna say because my that's like my favorite scene that's coming up that you're talking about here. So I can't okay. fly back past it. Uh, Johnny then tracks down Shannon, played by Dora Bird, at a local bar, but she is extremely bitter and rejects his appeal to help their son at this point in their life, telling him it is too late and that there are no do-overs. You gave up on day one. I mean, we learned that Johnny gave up on day one. Like, But the fact that she brings up he had mono, <laughs> fucking Robbie had mono, I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> like, I get the whole, like, hey, he built his own half pipe and fucking crashed and burned and broke his wrist, but the mono thing? Really? Was that really necessary? Well, I mean, like, mono is a serious, it's a serious sickness. Maybe that's why. Robbie's a hoe. He likes kissing girls. That's, <laughs> mono that's what comes to your mind? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> basically pretty much <laughs> but we get to know about Johnny and why he like the reason I'm like damn and so it's sad enough that Johnny's a loser and he's trying to redeem himself but the fact that Shannon's a loser also and like okay I'm just gonna I know I feel bad for Robbie like mess around yeah. with this guy I feel bad for Robbie like, two like loser he, didn't, parents. he didn't have parents yeah he didn't have parents he didn't have good role models in his life. He didn't have any parents. Like he didn't have sad. Daniel or Morita or Mr. Miyagi. I know. He needed. He needs a Mr. Miyagi. He needs a Mr. Miyagi. That, that's what I was thinking when I when I was watching it. Shannon says no do overs. All right, cool. Suspecting that Cole is responsible for the vandalism, Daniel confronts him at his dealership, and their war of, war of words culminates with Daniel spin kicking. A drink out of Cole's hand. Here comes the boba tea. Um, that's the scene that I like when he does that. I was like, "Oh my gosh, it's gonna start!" Here it goes. Yeah. Like yeah, no first little, quick. He calls him his a karate gimmick, and like Daniel's all like, "Well, I was a national champion and all that." And here comes Cole. Oh, oh here. Watch out, guys. We have a karate guy. We all. <laughs> um, Daddy says, I'm just joshing with you. And it triggered me that I hated that word. Joshing? <laughs> yes. Like, where did it come from? I knew a few people that said the word joshing back in the 90s. Like, I'm just joshing with you. And at the time, I was like, who the fuck is Josh? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? What is this? And then just they like told me like yeah it's just you know we're just kidding, but you can't say kidding. No, just Josh. Oh, it's a freaking. It, it's a California thing, I guess. I don't know. Is it? Like I, 
I haven't heard anybody from other states use it. I've only been around the Northern California stuff, and they've said it quite frequently, and I'm just like, oh, God. And ever since that day, it's like I've heard it so many other times. And then we get to 2018 or whatever it is. Uh, they aired it on, and the word joshing comes back, and I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, it's a, it's a California thing. Nobody has ever said it, or nobody has said it that I know of. I've never been. A, yeah, no. Uh, okay. No, no. It's it's definitely not a a west or not east coast it's thing. Not a, the east coast or midwest. midwest. It's, not, it's a, not a midwest thing. It's not a midwest thing. I've never heard anybody say it. I'm gonna start yeah. saying it uh, over here to see how anybody reacts to it. It's like I'm just joshing with you. Like oh, what? Don't. No, don't don't bring it back. No. Don't bring it back. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I'm going to start telling people I'm just joshing with you in the live, see what happens. <laughs> Everybody be like, no, what, what did you say, sir? That's the same thing when I said um, hella when I moved from California. And everybody's all like, what does hella mean? Like, just hella, you know, hell of a lot of money you got there. And it's hella hot, you know. And um, like, I See, I've heard that. I've said that. I've heard that. But I've never heard joshing. When I went back to California, like I said the word pop and I got freaking laughed at. I'm like, what is pop? I'm like, what? Oh, Pepsi? I say pop. Uh, do you, I was going to say, so some people say soda and some people say pop. <laughs> like, my brother was like, what the hell is pop, dude? I'm like, uh, Pepsi? Just say Pepsi. I was like, what's pop? Can I pop? <laughs> no, say Pepsi. It's like, fine, I'll say it. Um, next scene at the movies. Oh, here we go. Sam oh, is with Kyler. Right. Sam is with Kyler watching some type of movie where the girl wants to give the man her lung, but he says she already gave him her heart. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is the movie she chose for Kyler, and Kyler's just sitting there like, yeah, dude, I know. Okay, Kyler wants to be a little handsy, but Sam questions Kyler about his conduct during the movie. Like, okay, stop. Just watch the movie about this guy that wants the lung? What? <laughs> <laughs> he asked what's wrong, and she says she saw what he did to those kids in the library, to which he tells her they were his friends, and they were just messing around. Um, he tries to grope her, but she tells him to stop. He dismisses her concerns before attempting to grow up her again. Sam immediately fends him off and storms out of the theater, ending their relationship. Okay, but why did she go on this date after? Like, oh, I saw what you did to those kids. Like, why not just cancel the date and tell them? Like, That's a good question. Like, what? Like, why didn't you defend them, Sam? If you knew how to do this, like, hey, why don't you go up to Kyler and be like, hey, grab his hand stop messing with them. Like, why now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand the, their reasoning with that one. Why now, Sam, huh? She All she needs is some banana rama pancakes, that's all. And she'll be <laughs> fine. This whole day, she's just been like... She's probably thinking about those pancakes. Yeah. This whole day, like, the whole thing with her dad, the whole thing with Aisha, and now the whole thing with Kyler... Like damn, yeah, this day sucks. A bad day. Bro. Yeah, she's having a bad she, day. All she, all she needed was banana rama pancakes, and you know, hopefully, it's not a cruel summer. <laughs> well, since you're speaking about food, I'm going to throw in that I tried. I tried. We talked about last time or last week about the fried bologna, and I tried it on a tortilla. By the way, I was going to tell you that fried bologna and a tortilla. How'd it go? Um, I actually chose corn tortillas because I like those better. So did you have it on flour or corn? Uh, both. But okay. corn is, uh, is what you need. Definitely. Like corn has that, you know, oh, shoot, it fits on the corn. Mm -hmm. On the like on the flour, like, oh, I, I got to make two of them and put them like, you know. Yeah. Enough I, I, I like the taste of corn tortillas a lot better than flour tortillas. So I'm like, I'm going with corn. And I tried, I did try a part of it with with ketchup also. How'd it go? Did you? 
You, you were supposed to try that. You, you didn't do that, did you? No. Like, I tried it with cheese. I had, see, I did not try it with cheese. You we were supposed to do ketchup. I'll do ketchup next time. Yeah. You have to do that, and we'll report next week of what you think about it. I'll let you know what I think about it next week. Okay, then I'll I'll wait and tell you what I thought about it next week. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey, it's the same as eating um, pickles and peanut butter sandwich. Which I have not tried yet. Okay. <laughs> um, seeking the forgiveness he could not attain from his son and his ex-wife, Johnny returns to Miguel's home and pleads with his mother to let Miguel train with him again. He tells her he knows he messed up, but if she lets him come back, he won't fail him again. Hmm. Johnny leaves the car. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> like not, <laughs> we'll see. Johnny leaves and Carmen turns around to her mom to tell her in Spanish that she likes him. All this, like, Johnny went to the mom and like, look, I promise I won't fail him again. All that because he saw a father and his son just like having a fucking shake together. Like, oh right. man, I wish I could do that with my son. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, let me go to Miguel. <laughs> I want to have, I want to have a shake with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Not with Robbie, but Miguel. No, well, he feels oh. he's failed with Robbie, so he's trying to, he's trying to start over with Miguel. Trying to start over with his kid. Comp okay. Compensate, I don't know, compensate, compensate his daddy tendencies. Oh, that doesn't sound right. Yeah. I don't know. F father tendencies. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <There> you go. <laughs> um, the next day at the Larusso, both Daniel and Amanda are waiting for their kids to come down for breakfast. And he asked for a burrito, to which Daniel says, this isn't a restaurant. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck raised you. No, you're not going to have a burrito, kid. <laughs> fuck, man. Who raised you? Whose kid are you? Just eat your muffin. Just eat your muffin. Some comes, Sam comes down and asks for a banana ram and pancakes, to which Daniel says, he can make a new batch. Anything <laughs> for you, Sam. <laughs> Anthony says he thought this wasn't the restaurant. Daniel shuts him up. Shut up, kid. <laughs> you don't know shit. Shut the fuck up. You're not my kid. Amanda had an affair. I swear. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> this is the reason. It's like, I'm your stepdad. Fuck you. <laughs> what the hell? It's just Daniel. <laughs> Uh, Sam tells her parents her and Kyler broke up. Daniel has a very smirky, sad face. Aww. He broke up that loser, Kyler. Okay. Um, at the dojo, Johnny is cleaning out his office, but Miguel reappears, having finally received his mother's blessing, surmising that B Miguel was defeated because he lacked defense. Johnny vows to teach him that the best defense is more offense. Back at the LaRusso Auto Group, Anoush and Louis hand Daniel Cobra Kai flyer, which they found on a billboard, which makes Daniel realize that Johnny was responsible for the vandalism. Louis is fired up, but Anoush tells him to relax, but Louis gets more fired up and says, <laughs> Nah, bro. C cousin, Johnny disrespected the family name. This is personal. It's personal. What are we going to do about it? This is personal, Johnny. This is, I mean, this is personal, Danny. Johnny disrespected the family name. You don't do that shit. Dude, Johnny disrespected the family name a long time ago, okay? <laughs> in the 80s, okay? Daniel, Johnny disrespected the family name and the fact that Daniel had to fight back. Where were you, Louie, when, when Daniel was getting his ass kicked, huh? Where were you? Out he in Jersey. Back in, he was out in Jersey, yeah. Back in Jersey. Like, you don't get to decide talk about him. You don't get to decide this one, John. Uh, Louis, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, oh shit. Maybe Anthony is Louis' father. <laughs> <laughs> That's the family name. He was like, Dad, I want pancakes. Fuck you. Oh, I, you know, it, 
That would make sense, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I mean, I could see him being his dad. Like, they have the same weirdness with each other. Like, or, yeah, yeah, that's it. We're just going to say that. That's his dad. <laughs> And they, 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 adop- they adopted him from because, you know, he, Louis can't even take care of himself. So that's, oh what, they're doing. that's what happened. <laughs> Louis can't take him himself. Fucking Jersey. <laughs> we'll, take him in. Well, we'll just take Ant- him in for him. Yeah. Anthony that's what happened. Is, Anthony has that um, dirty fire in him. Give me a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast. Like, what? Breakfast burrito. Breakfast burrito. Uh, and the episode ends right there. Like, Louis wants to just shake out personal. Louis wants fucking revenge. Yeah. Johnny or Daniel's all like, I got your revenge. Let <laughs> 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 me be petty. Louis's all oh. like, nah, let's be to that. <laughs> yes, the petty, the pettiness begins, actually. All right. Um, what did you think of this episode? Um, to be perfectly honest, I got a little, um, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say bored or disappointed, but I felt like this episode was kind of like a, I don't know, like a filler episode. Does that make sense? I was going to say that. Yeah. Filler episode. Like it's just, it, there wasn't a whole, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It just wasn't one of the episodes. I feel like most of the episodes always had me intrigued and like, I wanted to see the next episode and this one, the way it ended, it didn't even like, it didn't get me to want to keep going to like watch the next episode. Does that make sense? It was just a filler Uh, episode. It just wasn't very exciting. Yeah, I, I would know. say that. I mean, um, there were parts that obviously were important um, because it's building up, I guess. But just the episode in general it just wasn't very exciting to me. Okay. Um, the beginning of it is just felt like, why did that need to happen? Why did you need to get drunk in the first place? Like, there was no need to get drunk and feel like I'm gonna tear this whole thing apart because my life sucks already. Might as well just tear it all apart. Um, ooh, uh, graffiti. <laughs> but I understand that the whole thing he had to like get drunk in order to look at LaRusso's face. I'm like, why are you smiling about? And then to put the dick in the face in there. But. Dude, I was like drunk. Unless he put all the flyers in his pocket, and they fell. Yeah, and one of them conveniently fell uh, on on the bill on top of that freaking billboard. Which shit on it? It was shit on it. Which which shit on just one fell and had shit on it, just like the whole yogurt backpack thing. Yeah, see, I didn't like this. This episode was just weird. It was. Oh, I know what your favorite scene was. The uh, whole you know, you know what my favorite scene was. What, what is yeah, it? But didn't you just say your favorite scene? That was it. I, I didn't. But let's see if you know what oh, it is. Okay. No, go ahead. Say it. No, no, like I no, no. I want. I want to know if you know. The uh, spin kick to the boba. Okay. Well, you got it. That you was the only. It. That was, I, well, no, I didn't say it was my. Fi- oh, did I? I did say my favorite scene was coming up, and then you went back, so you remembered. Okay, you're right. That was the only exciting part of this episode. <laughs> that was the only exciting part. It was the, the only Boba. exciting part. Seriously, it was uh, when 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 Daniel just we kicked. Yeah, I was like, yes, finally some excitement, and then it ends. I'm like, okay. Daniel won. Boba T zero. Right. Um. <laughs> pretty much, my favorite scene is the banana ramen scene. The of, course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> because you've talked about those pancakes this whole time, so I kind of figured. <laughs> I'm gonna go make some banana rama pancakes in the pretty soon. See how that goes. Like, I oh. I have everyone loves mine, my my banana pancakes I make. I mean, I gotta try Daniel's. I heard they they, they have a kick to it. Yeah, I'll have to, I have to figure out what else is in them then, because all I know is bananas. 
Okay. Did you just say they have a kick to them? Or was that yes, supposed to be like a... Yes. <laughs> I just caught that. Thank you. I'm like waiting for you to say something. Like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I got it. I got it. I get your humor. I'm getting lost here. I'm going to need a, a board, a soundboard pretty soon to just laugh at my own jokes. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa. And I'm Dawn. And if you've ever watched a TV show and thought to yourself, oh my god, that season finale plot twist was absolutely bonkers. Or seen a movie and thought, wow, I need to talk to somebody about this train wreck immediately. Then we think you'll fit right in with our podcast, I Hate It, Let's Watch It. We watch TV shows like Riverdale and Emily in Paris. And movies like Deep Water, Killer Sofa, Rubber, and Deadly Illusions. And we give them the total rinse they deserve. It's basically group therapy for movie masochists. So come check us out wherever you stream podcasts. Hey, it's Evo. We're going to get back to the episode you're listening to, but first, let me tell you about Dark Fate Creations. Dark Fate Creations are candles that are vibrant, colorful, marble tops, amazing, mouth-watering fragrances, fueled by lovely braided cotton wicks. Paper threads woven into every cotton wick for a clean, romantic, slow, and consistent burn. Each candle is unique from the next as they are hand-mixed and hand-poured, right in Grass Valley, California. They use only coconut and soy waxes for a safer, cleaner, and longer burn time. That's almost 72 hours. That's like binging on all 130 episodes of the podcast. All fragrance blends have been heavily researched. Dark Fate Creations not only care about the look, fragrance, and quality of their candles and their other products, but also the effects they have in their customers' homes. So go to darkfatecreations.com. The link will be in the show notes. Okay, episode five is called Counterbalance, written and directed by the creators of the show. Uh, Synopsis is Daniel tries to strike a shady deal to undermine Johnny's dojo and struggles to find the balance in his life camp by visiting and friend. Meanwhile, Johnny expands his enrollment ring in the dojo. Miguel puts his karate practice in reality as a mental place of rejection in school. Uh, the word counterbalance is means that it's a weight that balances another weight. Uh, the code opens. The episode code opens with Miguel waking up early in the morning, puts on his headphones and starts doing knuckle push-ups, which he was told to start doing on the last episode. The song he is listening to is called Slither by Leo Burberg and Zach Robinson. Miguel and Johnny start a rigorous training montage in which Miguel practices blocking baseballs fired at him from a pitching machine. Getting choked by Johnny who asks what do Cobras do, but Miguel just taps out instead. Miguel running at the start of the day and doing knuckle push-ups again as it ends. Uh, it ends with Michael get- Miguel, what the hell am I calling him Michael? It ends <laughs> with Miguel getting out of the chokehold and saying a Cobra slithers. Afterwards, a yoga class enters the dojo, leading Johnny to explain that he had to sell it, the property at night to keep up with expenses. The yoga teacher says they need to change the energy in the room, and they cover the Cobra Kai phrase with a poster that says, Love is here to namaste. The yoga class, the yoga class first move is the Cobra pose and the Cobra Kai logo of the I love how they start with the cobra pose. <laughs> Let's namaste. Let's, you know, put this poster over this hate message. And our first pose is a cobra. <laughs> Johnny just stares at them. It's like, hmm, okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> At the Oaks Country Club, Daniel has dinner with Armand Arcarian, played by Ken Division, who owns a strip mall in Reseda, where the Cobra Kai Dojo is located. Though he inquires about buying the property from Arcarian, his true intention is to entice him with lobsters and possibly come back to the country club as long as he raises the rent of the dojo, effectively putting Johnny out of business as a reprisal to a billboard crank. <laughs> Also and the pettiness club. starts. This, this the episode, episode, the episode, this episode is full of petty. I'm just going to say that. It, a counterbalance. 
<laughs> like, oh, oh, you want to put a weight on it? Here, I'll put more weight on this side then. It one petty, another person goes does another petty thing. And it's mostly from Daniel who does the petty stuff. Oh no, no, like, there's 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 more petty in there. Not just okay. from Daniel. <clears throat> um also at the club, Sam tells her mother that she had planned to go to a concert with Yasmin and Moon, both played by Melissa Cochran and Anna Keppel, respectively. They have not been returning her text. She then shows her mother a video of two girls gloating at the concert. Such a green screen moment in the background there. See, Petty. <laughs> they weren't I'm even just gonna at the point concert. Out. I'm going to point out concert. all the petty. Uh, they went to the concert without <laughs> Sam. I'm going to point out all the pettiness in this episode. So. <laughs> oh, I'm going to say they weren't even at the concert. They had like a little green screen in the background and they were just like moving around and they pretended to be at the concert. Wait, is this, is it, you're, this, is no, this your like, theory or is this really my theory? Funny? It's this my is your theory. theory. It didn't really happen. Okay, I got it you. It didn't really happen. This is There's just your like, theory. Okay. Let's let let's dress up and, and pretend we're green, at the concert. Have a green screen behind us. Pretend we're at a concert and send it to Sam. Okay. Wouldn't you be well, fucking that's, pissed that's, off? Too? That's still petty. That's still petty. Well, but whether they were off? at the concert or not, they're that, that's petty. Yeah. Like. Uh, no, nah, that was the whole plan the entire time. Like, let's go to the concert. They didn't really have tickets to go to the concert. She was just like, whatever. All right, we just won't invite her. <laughs> like, if, I'm going to say that, uh, what's her name? Yasmin is the queen of petty right here. Yes. Like, she's been long conning Sam the entire time. Like, we're going to go to this concert. We're all going to go to this concert. And then her, it's like the final week. It's like, hey. Let's just go. Let's just do this and pretend that we're there and send it to Sam. Have her feel bad. Or not, you know, whatever. This is just my theory. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to. I, I don't know if. I don't know if I agree. Well, okay, I'll just agree with your theory. <laughs> she then shows her mother a video of the two girls floating at the concert, to which her mother replies, she is better off without them. Yes. Amanda then looks over at the table where Anthony is sitting, who's drinking the butter. That's disgusting. Yes, it is. Who does that? Who, Anthony. Who does that? Anthony Louis' son. <laughs> <laughs> not Daniel LaRusso's son. Sam over see. there is like, not doing that. Sam never did I, any of that stuff. I, that's something Louis would do. Drink the butter. Some, totally some, his son. Fucking Jersey would do. Yes. Oh, we're just calling him Jersey now. Okay. Louis from New Jersey would definitely right. do that. Yes. Do what? <laughs> Roland Sargeri's <laughs> son, played by Alex Huff, tells Anthony that his dad owns buildings. And here's the, another petty stuff. Not to be upstage, Anthony fires back with his dad owns cars. Roland mm -hmm. responds back with his dad makes more money. Well, Anthony hits a kill shot and says his dad knows karate and could probably kill Roland's dad. See, Petty. Petty. <laughs> oh, Zarkarius says if he, if he wants him to scratch his balls, how is Daniel going to scratch his Zarkarius balls? Confused, Daniel says he might get him reinstated to the club. That's not how you say the thing, but he might get him reinstated to <laughs> the club if he gets first crack at any properties in Reseda, especially at the strip club mall where the snake karate is at. You know, the, street, the snake karate. The snake karate. Yes, there. Like, if you do that for me, just, you know, I can bring you back in. There's your petty. Right, because then he can have as much lobster and melted butter as he wants. Uh, I don't want to think about butter anymore. <laughs> Not after this. <laughs> Robbie returns home from a shopping trip in the hopes of spending t some time with his mother. Only to find Shannon getting ready for another night out. She mentions that Johnny came to speak with her and suggested that Robbie move in with him. But while she doubts his sincerity, Robbie seems conflicted. Oh, really? He said that. Oh, hmm. I guess he did change. Oh, okay. I'm going to go surprise him later tonight. <laughs> yep. 
that that I should do that definitely. At school, tired of being bullied, Aisha interrupts a training session at the dojo. Not at school, I guess. Tired of being bullied, Aisha interrupts a training session at the dojo and asks to jo join up. Johnny is reluctant to train a girl in the ways of Cobra Kai, but Miguel convinces him to give her a chance. Johnny ta interviews Aisha as to why she wants to join. She tells him the students tease her and send her an anonymous message that she should hurt herself. Johnny calls them a bunch of pussies and says that back in his day, they would do this teasing to their faces, so there was honor and respect. Says that these geeks are hiding behind their computers are a bunch of spineless losers. Jan Johnny asks Aisha if she is afraid of these losers. Aisha responds that she's not. Johnny says then by the time he is done with her, she is going to be sending a message back, and it's not going to be with her keyboard, but it's going to be with her fist. Um, and here's Johnny again, like out of the loop saying that it is, they don't want women in the army <laughs> what yeah. when girls girls can't do karate girls can't that that's wrong because that's they don't they're not even in the army <laughs> what I guess he's, he's still living in the 80s like does he, he ever i don't think he ever gets out of the 80s throughout this whole thing maybe maybe a little bit but no. yeah He's way, so, way stuck back. Uh, we don't want to hurt girls here. I was like, dude, do you not... uh, if he's so, weren't there like movies with girls in karate? Or I want to say yes. What was it? I forgot. I gotta look into them because by that time he should have learned at least some of these women in and in fighting action movies. So, so now, so I was just gonna say, are there eighties movies with women fighting? I'm trying to Bridget think of one Nielsen. like off the top of my head. Brigitte Nielsen, right? Uh, again, oh, fucking, what's her name? Red Sonia, nineteen eighty-five. Uh, Maria Conchita Alonso, The Running Man. Sigourney Weaver, Alien, Weaver. Linda Hamilton, uh, not yet. Terminator, Terminator 2, either way. Terminator, Terminator, Terminator 2. 1, 2. Yeah. Uh, no. Meg Chili, the big chill. Uh, aliens, Alien, Aliens, all of them. Sandal Bergman, Conan the Barbarian. Come on, they were like there. Co Olivia Diabo, Conan the Destroyer. Helen Slater, Supergirl. I don't think he would have liked that one. <laughs> like, no, I, don't think, he, he, I, don't think, I, I don't know where he was that he wasn't watching any of these movies. I don't think um, Johnny would have liked uh, a Supergirl movie. <laughs> like, I don't, at all. I was like, oh, Superman. Hell yeah, that's a man movie right there. Yeah. So, uh, freaking Helen Slater comes out in 1984 with Supergirl. It's like, well, why are they trying to get girls in Supergirl? Like, what? What is this? <laughs> uh, Die Hard, uh, Lethal Weapon, Tita Turner, Mad Max Beyond, Thunderdome. What about She Ra? She wasn't she eighties. Yeah, Leah Thompson in Back to the Future, nineteen eighty five. I mean, but she what? Huh? You lost me. <laughs> Wait, Wait a minute, what? Leah I, I know who Leah Thompson is, and I know what Back to the Future is, but well, how did we go from fight? She wasn't a fighting. She wasn't, she wasn't but she was in it. Wouldn't that make her like, ooh, why does this girl look like? My ex girlfriend. Uh, what, what does that have to do with fighting women oh, fighting never, movies? Never, what are you doing? No, it has nothing to do with it at all. <laughs> I'm so confused now. <laughs> now okay, I thought so back no. to the future. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, we can do that. Um, <laughs> so, no. I guess he he's not aware that women can fight also, I guess. Um, no, because they have hollow bones, he said. 
They have hollow bones. Who did he? What? <laughs> he says that. They have hollow bones. <laughs> like, who was he talking? Who? See, all that time with freaking <laughs> his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> hey, I want to practice this move on you. It's like, no, you ha- I have hollow bones. All women have your hollow bones then. Son of a bitch. Johnny is not meant for the 2020s. That's all I'm going to say. So, like, this dude got out of a freaking chirogenic chamber and decided to, like, speak 80s. Nice boombox. <laughs> <laughs> boombox is still around? What? Um. Okay. Next scene, Yasmin and Muth. Yasmin and Moon are in a parking lot smoking weed. High school are smoking weed. Good times. Homeless Lynn is talk- <laughs> stalking them for money. Yasmin tells Moon not to, ma- not to move or make eye contact, but Moon does and let- Lynn gets near the car to harass them about money. Give me money! Hey, you. Give me money. I she want wants, your money. She wants pizza again, probably. She wants Johnny's pizza. Uh, Yasmin tells Moon to lock the doors, but Moon is too slow to do it and doesn't want to feel bad. Yeah, I don't want to do that either. <laughs> like, lock the door. I would, but then the the door thing, the lock does this noise where they can hear it too. It's like, oh, fuck that. <laughs> like, how dare you? <laughs> so back, um, the backside passenger door opens and it's Sam. She confronts both Yas and Moon as to why they are avoiding her. She then learns that Kyler has been spreading ugly rumors about her around school by telling everyone she performed oral sex on him in the theater. Perturbed, Sam breaks off their friendship and leaves the car door open, leaving Yasmin to yell that she's going to get them killed by homeless Lynn. But who ever leaves Lynn. the car door open? That bothers me. It's fucking petty. <laughs> <laughs> the, yep, they're, yep, petty. I'm just going to get out of the car and leave the door open. Yeah. Don't for- <laughs> close the door. Nah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, back at the dojo, Johnny orders Miguel to attack Aisha with full force. Aisha reminds Johnny that this is their first day. Johnny says that your enemies don't care what day it is. They <laughs> prey on weakness, and if she jump, if she wants to beat them, she has to conquer her fears and jump face first into the fire. Johnny orders them to fight each other. Miguel apologizes and kicks her in the midsection, knocking at least three feet away. <laughs> However, Aisha responds by tackling Miguel and delivering a brutal knee drop to his midsection, solidifying her status as a natural cobra. Um, last episode, Miguel had broken ribs. <laughs> just want to mention that. Oh, damn. <laughs> This episode, Miguel's getting more broken ribs. Great. Oh, I was thinking that too. I'm like, did you hear? He goes, "Oh, my ribs." I'm like, what? Is, what is he doing? He just got broken ribs. Why is he like having him be kicked in the ribs again? He, she did it. He didn't like say like kick him in the ribs, and he didn't no. say like just don't kick me in the ribs. He just like, oh, let me let me practice with you. And Aisha tackled him. Like, that's another rib shot, and then... (laughs) Petty! (laughs) That knee drop wasn't necessary at all. She just, like, fuck you. She did it anyways, yep. I'm just just showing you, women can fight. (laughs) Women can fight by kneeing you in the ribs. <laughs> Johnny laughs and turns his attention to the convenience store across the dojo where Sark Carrion is arguing with the tenant. Johnny asks them to be quiet. He's trying to run a dojo. The store clerk tells Johnny Sark Carrion is trying to raise the rent. Johnny then asks, How's he going to double the rent? Sark Carrion says, Figure it out and then leaves. More petty. More petty. Um, he, tell, he also tells uh, Daniel that he tried to bubble. It sucks. <laughs> like, I tried your boba tea. It sucks, man. <laughs> but I did what you asked. Like, oh, okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Don't ever ask me to do that again. 
Uh, faced with increased rent, Johnny visited a pawn shop and attempts to sell some of his vintage possessions, but to no avail. Yeah, nice Nintendo you got there, buddy. <laughs> fucking Atari. <laughs> he, yeah, definitely. He doesn't oh, even he, know the difference between the game systems. He doesn't. It's like it's a Nintendo. Poor guy. My for years, my mom called a fucking Super Nintendo a Nintendo, the Sega Genesis a Nintendo, the Nintendo sixty four a Nintendo, the PlayStation a Nintendo. Oh god! I used to no. play with the Nintendo. I'm like fucking hell, mom. Yeah, everything is Nintendo, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. Is it, what is the PlayStation? It's like no Nintendo. Okay. All right. Yeah, <laughs> Nintendo. I'll stop. I'll just stop arguing with you. Just say Nintendo. So it's just like it's just like calling everything pop. Son of a bitch. <laughs> wow. I'll just call it Pepsi. No, it's pop. There you go. It's a fuzzy pop feeling. That gives you diabetes later on. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have the, the pop, please? <laughs> That's why. Did you not realize that you were doing that? Pop Nintendo comparison. Uh... Sorry, I called you out. Oh my god! <laughs> is, it, is this your way of being petty after last week? Wait, I wasn't petty last week. I was. Oh yeah. I Were I you? Don't I don't know. Okay. That's my turn. Okay. <laughs> Johnny then drops by the mini to pick up some more beer and encounters Daniel, who very subtly reveals that he knows Johnny was responsible for the billboard. But put Johnny's beer on his tab and leave. What the fuck are you talking about a tab, Johnny? I mean, Daniel. Right? Well, this how is why? A, this need is a tab. A this is a it's freaking a <laughs> this is a freaking convenience store, dude. Like, but, just but wait, pay for it. There's <laughs> petty right there as well. Because Daniel says, put his beer on my tab. Um, it looks like he's had a bad day. So... Yeah, there's Petty in there, too. You could tell the sarcasm in Daniel's voice with that one. That's like an underlying Petty. The so, <laughs> best part about it is that, hold on, back to the, uh, the pawn shop. Um, the guy says that uh, the, his rent was increased also. So everybody's <laughs> rent and that whole strip mall is increased. So he's all like, yeah, I'm going to have to bill you more because, you know, the rent is increased. Uh, store clerk should have been just like, give me more money. My rent was increased because of you. <laughs> 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 like, what? But can I say uh, the, the coin collection that he showed? I had that coin collection, like, in that blue folder and everything. So that was real? That was a real thing? That was a real gold. thing, yeah. So solid it gold stuff. No, no, my, it wasn't gold though. It was looked exactly like that, but it was mine was pennies. Oh, okay. It had the collection of the pennies with the little folding blue, just like the one they showed. Showed. I didn't. There was no gold, but it was pennies. That's cool. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. It wasn't gold though. It wasn't gold. No. Uh, at home, Danny opens up a bottle of wine to celebrate the impending closure of Cobra Kai. But his wife Amanda's beside herself when she learns about Daniel's scheme. Though he succeeded in getting back at his rival, she points out that he failed to take the other businesses at the mall into account, meaning that their rents have all gone up too. You're always thinking about yourself, Daniel. <laughs> he implores Daniel to return to his own self and not stoop to Johnny's level. Stop being petty, Daniel. <laughs> Poor petty. More petty. Stop thinking about uh, yourself, Daniel. Think about other people, too. Maybe Johnny would have wanted to get back with Allie. You don't know. Oh, boy. They're all over there trying to be all freaking petty and <laughs> Jersey. <laughs> we do sing Jersey way. <laughs> if you can't open the door, kick it open. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that just flashed back in my head. Oh, from Karate Kid. I just love that we never see that guy ever again. I know. Like, 
we we live in the same complex for the entire duration of the movie, but we don't see him again. No, no, he's in there several times. He's at the beach, he's and then the beach. and then he is. He was at the he was at the competition. Was he? Yes, he was at the competition. Oh God, we got to watch it again. We keep saying this. So we're supposed to like, watch it again. We just have not like, watched it yet. Right, but because like that whole thing at the beach is like John, uh, Daniel getting his ass kicked and like him trying to like, you okay, man? Come on, let me get you, help you up. And Danny does this thing where he's like throwing sand. It's like, no, leave me alone. Oh my god. Oh god. And we don't see the we don't see this dude ever again. <laughs> like, hey, I know you kicked a door in my face. <laughs> but let me help you up, bro. <laughs> like, nope. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Uh, the next day at school, Sam finds that her association with Jasmine's group has caused a rift between her and Aisha. Jasmine puts her bag on the chair that Sam would have sat in. Whoa, whoa what was that? You, you're gonna say it, Brandy? Go ahead. Wait, what am I saying? <laughs> yeah, Jasmine putting her bag on the chair saying oh you can't sit with us there it is <laughs> you can't sit with us you can't sit with us oh <laughs> petty. petty so petty so petty you can't sit with us Yasmin or Sam you can't sit with us at all we're petty uh, uh, Aisha tells Sam not to even bother, but she can go to, with Kyler, who doesn't mind that she sucks. Ooh. Fed up with her classmates teasing, Sam confronts Kyler about the rumors, but he openly mocks her. He tells her the whole cafeteria about LaRugo's billboard with the big dick on it, saying that Sam takes after her dad. Ugh. Oh. Everyone, yeah. I don't like uh, him. Everyone laughed except for Miguel, Dimitri, and Eli, who just showed up to sit at the table. She drops her into... She drops into a stance as if to attack him, but Miguel interrupts and dials Kyler off for being such an asshole. Yes. <laughs> Miguel, Dimit Miguel comes to her rescue. I love this part. Love this part. Dimitri and Eli are like, oh, fuck again? <laughs> I'm like, come out. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go, let's go sit somewhere else. <laughs> it's like, we don't want to do it. They ran. They basically ran because he said they did. They did. Kyler shoves Miguel and taunts him, but Miguel responds by trapping Kyler's arm and punching him in the face. The cafeteria erupts as Miguel does battle with Kyler and his gang, decimating them in minutes and impressing Sam, but Miguel is then sent to the office. My favorite scene. Right here. The whole this is the whole um the trailer they did for the the Cobra Kai trailer, season one and shit. This is what like this scene and the scene where Johnny fights Kyler's gang. As oh, okay, the, yeah. Those two scenes were in the trailer, and that's where like, oh shit, I'm watching this movie, I'm watching the show, and that's what everybody liked about it. That's what it, like, let's see what this is about. Yeah, well, um, I, him taking the um when he takes the cafeteria cafeteria tray, and he just takes them all out with that cafeteria tray. That's like it's a, awesome. He does awesome. <laughs> so I just uh, I love, this is when I knew it was gonna get good. This is this is when it gets good. So watch this a uh, scene right here. Obviously at work, and I'm sitting there watching it and I do this whole like yes! And here comes everybody else. Like, what the hell's wrong with you, dude? What's going on? Oh, watching Cobra Kai. Uh okay, here we go. <laughs> look at this scene, look at this fight thing. I had to share it all over the place. Um, after school, Miguel tells Johnny about the fight. Johnny says Miguel's mom is going to kill him. But his grandmother answered the call when the school called, and she was proud of him. <sighs> Nana, ya Yaya? Yaya doesn't speak English. Yaya, Yaya doesn't she... speak English, right? No, she speaks English. She, Yaya speaks English? Yaya, yeah. yeah. She speaks both, English and Spanish. Um, yeah, she speaks English. I heard it. Okay. Like, I just, like, imagine her, like, oh, yeah, picking up the phone, like, yes, we're talking, we're one of the parents of Miguel. He's been in a fight. Oh, no. What happened? <laughs> uh, he beat up a bunch of bullies. Okay, I tell him. 
<laughs> I could picture her just saying, I'm so proud. I'm, I'm so proud of him. What did the bullies do? <laughs> what did the bullies <laughs> do to him? <laughs> you know, like I could just picture it like, oh, yeah, he got into a fight with the other guys, too. Yeah? Okay. Well, they should have not messed with my grandson. What now? Exactly. Like, my grandma would have gone in there and, like, fucking kicked him. Also, like karate. And shit. <laughs> like you, 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 you're beating up my grandson. Yeah, come here. Grab him by the ear and fucking take him out to the fucking front of the school and just like knock him out. <laughs> hey, she did that. What she came to my school and like, oh shit, I don't know who this woman is. <laughs> who grandma is this? I don't know her. I promise. I swear, I don't know who she is. <clears throat> and then she just stares at me like, oh, fuck. <laughs> That's another school grandma story for later. <laughs> um, so the school called and she was proud of him. Johnny then says that Miguel took all the lessons he was taught and used it to beat the shit out of those bullies. Miguel says yes. And like a proud father, Johnny rewards Miguel with his old Cobra Kai training gi and embraces him. This is where the part where Ravi shows up mm -hmm. and like oh hell no you're hugging another yep. kid yep like what <laughs> like not even gonna question it like okay i came in at the wrong time you're hugging another kid i'm out <laughs> i know <laughs> like i feel like oh okay that's weird but no but he, he, just... he has plans of his own robbie has plans of his own though he does, he does. More more petty coming in. <laughs> uh, Daniel visits Mr. Miyagi's grave after a moment of reflection. He suddenly has a flashback to the night of his 18th birthday and Miyagi's speech about karate lessons unbalanced being applied to one's life. Uh, I, love, I love that part. We all love that part. Um, the fact that they brought him back. Oh, mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, Mr. Miyagi's gravestone, the born and died months are the same as Pat Morita's. Morita mm -hmm. was seven years younger than Miyagi and died six years earlier. Uh, when, I, was, when, uh, when I first watched this, I looked that up right away. That was one of the first things I did. Like, wait a minute, what? No, that's not right. And then, like, uh, Miyagi died in 2011. Morita passed away in 2005 or six, around there. So it was just like, oh, okay. But it's the same month in um, Born and Died month, basically. June and November. Born in June, died in November. Uh, Nariyoshi Muriaki's gravestone indicates that he served in the 442nd Regiment and received the Medal of Honor. The 442nd Regiment Combat Team was composed of an almost entirely a second generation Japanese Americans and is the most decorated regiment in U.S. military history. 21 of its members were awarded the Medal of Honor. Activated in early 1943, this regiment received about one year of training before being sent to the European theater. Mr. Miyagi would have been 17 or 18 when he joined the regiment in 19 or 20 when he earned his medal. The regiment's motto was Go for Broke and was commemorated with a U.S. stamp issued on June 3rd, 2021. So we get to see that as well as the reason he's ever done. Backstory to Miyagi stuff, basically. Yeah. And I love it. Uh, next scene, Johnny arrives at the dojo where a long line has formed of students watching the fight between Miguel and Kyler and wanting to apply for Cobra Kai classes. Johnny tells Miguel, looks like they're, bus they're in business. And when he opens the door, the scene changes into Daniel opening the door to his old dojo, to which he starts cleaning it out and puts his old, old Japanese manuscript on the walls, as well as portraits of his old sensei, Mr. Miyagi. Oh, God. It's just like the scene where he just like puts his stuff. I'm just like, Mr. Miyagi. Mm -hmm. I got I got emotional when I saw that, and do you know the uh, what even made it more so was the music they played was the yes. same as the ending to Karate Kid, uh, the first Karate Kid. 
when that yeah. music came on, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, that, yeah. It's something about that music that always gets me. And they, they put it in when he was cleaning out the his or you know, fixing his studio up. Bill Conti composer. Yes. Is that what it um, yeah. That's yeah. who he was. That's who the composer was, like Bill Conti. I had to go check on double check on the karate kid soundtracks, the karate kid stuff. It's all there. Um he does it for the first one. I gotta go check on the second and third movies. Uh, optical flip to the next day, Amanda's interviewing Robbie, who might have given her a fake high school transcript. He's missing a month of school. <laughs> it's impressive. It's impressive how he yeah. has a transcript already. Amanda mm-hmm. will ask, why isn't he in college? Go ahead. No. I'm just Go ahead. Robbie says he has just taken some time off to figure things out. Amanda asks why he doesn't want, why does he want to work there? He answers, this is exactly where he wants to be. Amanda tells him he can start Monday and she shakes his hand. And uh, petty. Yep, that's where the I, the big petty is, I think. Robbie's coming in and yeah. This is again where it starts getting good. It is. Um, all because I'm gonna go work for Larusso since you have another kid mm-hmm. over there. That's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, Howdy. sure. When Howdy. Uh, back in the Daniel Dojo, traditional Japanese music, which is actually composed by Bill Conti on the Karate Kid soundtrack, is heard as he starts putting picture frames of Mr. Miyagi. What <sighs> of his what was that? I just said, oh, Mr. Miyagi. Oh, Mr. Miyagi. Uh, picture frames are of Mr. Miyagi, one of himself and his daughter practicing karate. And I think more. there were more of them. He finds and dons the iconic headband in G, and the song changes once again to mm-hmm. that of the final scene in the Karate Kid movie. Bill Conti again, and this is called Daniel's Moment of Truth. He begins to form the Miyagi family kata, having seemingly returned to his old self. Before the show ends, we get an image of a tribute to Noriyuku Pat Morita, who passed away in 2005. And that's the end of the episode. Yep. What did you think of how they did that ending where they put the memory of with uh, Pat Morita? Why didn't they put it in the first episode? I don't know. I was wondering that too because it's not like he, he, he. It's not like he had just passed away. Right. Like that could have been I was done. Thinking in the first that episode. too. But the fact mm-hmm. that it's like halfway through, well, or well, the last episode. Now that I think about it, though, no, you know, yeah, true. But I also think they did put it in a good part because mm-hmm. he's bringing back the studio. Like he's Dan now. Daniel's. He's in this now. It's coming back. So, in like memory he's, of. he's well, yeah, because he this is where he first visited visited him was in this episode, and then he's bringing back he's bringing it back he's bringing back uh the studio Mr Miyagi um everything he taught him you know he's he's back to being his old Daniel in nineteen what eighty five or eighty four yes um. What did I think of this episode? The petty episode? <laughs> the As petty we episode. And, and we're, we're doing petty stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, counterbalance, which is just like one after the other, other stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like, damn. Um, favorite scene is going to be the, cor- the cafeteria. Of yep, course. that's absolutely my favorite scene. Um, I love that scene. Cobra Kai. Yeah. Um, Cobra Kai never dies. Uh, I want to say this is one of my favorite episodes. One, like, the top episode for me of this season. Like, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it at number one already. I'm, we're gonna like rate them from one to ten. Okay, but, but can we switch them? Yeah, at the okay, end. Okay, so this is definitely, end. this is definitely number one so far from what we've seen. Right. Yes. Okay, number one so far. Yes. 
<clears throat> um, with the second episode being number two for me. Because we just like, oh, shit, we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, Cobra I'd Kai. have to say, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. All right. Um, all in all, I love this episode. I was like so into it. Like <laughs> me at work just going, Yes, let's go do it. Dude. Like, what the hell is your problem? Are you are you done work? Like setting up? Like, yeah, I didn't need to watch this episode right here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you though. Appreciate it. Appreciate your concern. Hope y'all enjoyed this episode of both of rewatching and breaking down season one, episode four and five of Cobra Kai. Join us back again next week when we do the same thing. We're going to be doing all these episodes. Um, can't wait for the final episode. Uh, I'm so into it. Can't wait like, for the what watch, episode? Which episode? Uh, any of them. Like I'm like oh. bro, having fun rewatching them again. Mm-hmm. Me like, too. What was I doing? What was I doing at the casino during this time? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Like YouTube Red, okay, and then YouTube Premium, and then Netflix, and then the Netflix part is when I'm just like at home sitting down. Yes. Uh, hope you all enjoyed this episode, and email us at from the apron at gmail dot com, and I will gladly read it on the air, just like I did earlier in the episode at the start of the show. Thank you for doing that, Don. We appreciate you. Oh. Uh, let us know what else we should uh, break down and hope you all enjoyed it. And if you feel want to do a little bit more, follow us and support us on Instagram, the threads, YouTube, apron underscore stories on the Twitter. Shout out to Don again for following me on the Twitter. Follow and join the lives on TikTok at Evolution of the Geek by subscribing or join up. Show up to the live stream to hang out with the rest of the MPP squad. And I will shout you out at the end of every episode. Like Menace Smiling, Little Linguini, Brandy, uh, she's on the show. Lindsay420, Moth Queen, Moonlight Dancer, Alexandria, Queen of Cats, Nighty, Squirrely Bree, Kimmy, Feeling Free, LB, Ron Snow, JJ the Jet Paint, Tender Surrender, Forever Jane, Red Casper One, Bunny Rabbit, Hall Free Slot, Tanya Rose 78, Deck Runswitch, Georgia Elizabeth, Purple Moose Crafting, Presses in the Herb, Tiffany Defense Girl, Nerd in Texas Podcast, Little Great Tina, Strawberry Milk, Life with Jen, Dan Cordova, Life with Matt, Johnny Lava Lava. Hey, Johnny Lava Lava. <laughs> I see what you did. I see what you did there, Johnny Lava Lava. Why don't you just go to uh, pleasurepassport.shop and get 20% off on adult toys when you enter discount code EVO at pleasurepassport.shop. That discount code again is EVO. All right, Johnny Lover Lover, whatever your name says. <laughs> Link will be in the show notes. <laughs> Thank you for supporting, the, listening to the podcast, joining the TikTok Live, and being a huge part of my third place community. Tell your friends. Join us next time for more behind the scenes stories, movies, and TV show reviews. When we come to you from Under the Apron, I'm Evo. I'm Brandy. And remember strike first, strike hard. No mercy. No mercy. <laughs>